Assalamu alaikum ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> welcome back to Carza. And welcome to what might just be the loudest G-Wagon in the world. <laughs> no, but seriously, this car is fitted with some sort of Capristo exhaust system. I don't know exactly what it is, but it sounds absolutely phenomenal. And since we're talking about things that are phenomenal, would you just look at it from the outside? I mean, I don't think any company has ever made an SUV that looks this good. Like, I, I can't get over the fact that this car is almost eight years old and it still looks this good. And we're in 2020 right now. Even the new G-Wagon, to me at least, it, 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 it looks great, but it doesn't have the muscle that this G-Wagon embodies. So anyway, moving on from the looks, I want to answer a lot of your guys' questions about what the G-Wagon drives like. Because you've heard other reviews talk about this particular model year's very lackluster driving experience. And to be honest, unfortunately, it really isn't the best. I mean, look, I'm, I'm moving the steering wheel right now and it feels like nothing's happening. It's sort of delayed. Plus, the transmission is almost, I'd say, slower than it is in my E63, which is crazy to me. I didn't know that this transmission could get any worse than it was in the E63. And then there's the interior as well. I mean, you're paying, what, nearly $200,000 for one of these brand new? And I would personally be quite annoyed if I got this interior. So then you may be wondering, or you may be asking yourself why this car is arguably one of the most popular SUVs among elite, among the elite, among celebrities, among royalty even in Saudi Arabia and Dubai. And there's a simple reason for that. Because when you're driving one of these, you are the absolute king of the road. And everything I said that's wrong or that isn't great about the G-Wagon, that's really honestly irrelevant because you really don't care what this car doesn't do well because it does one thing brilliantly. Make you feel like you are the most important person in the world. And would you just listen to the noise it makes? special and it's so good at what it does that I think this might very well be the best SUV for Pakistan. Or is it? This, ladies and gentlemen, is the 2014 Range Rover Vogue autobiography. It has a 5 liter supercharged V8 and I believe that in every measurable way it is better than the 2013 G63 AMG. And what better way to start comparing the two than a good old-fashioned drag race? It comes as no surprise that the Range Rover is faster than the G63, but that's not the only area where it triumphs over the g -Wide. And it's not just that this car is faster than the G63 in a straight line. I mean, let's be honest, how relevant is that when you're discussing cars like these? 
but it's also quite literally everything else about this car that is just better than the G63. I mean, take for example the interior. It's much, I'm not going to say that this is the best interior I've ever seen or anything along those lines, but keeping in mind this car came out in 2014, this interior is absolutely gorgeous. And then on top of that, the drive is so much more luxurious than the G63. It rides better, it, it feels better in the driver's seat, it's just a better all-around car. And surprisingly, it handles better too. That's something I was actually very surprised by. Yeah, fine, the G-Wagon weighs 2,600 kilograms, but this isn't exactly light. And I thought because this was geared more towards comfort, it wouldn't handle as well. But then again, the G-Wagon does have an ancient, and I mean ancient ladder frame chassis. And then there's the other things like the engine. It's not as vivacious, as bright as the M157 in the G63. But it's smooth. It feels like it suits this kind of vehicle a little bit more. And then there's the transmission, which is miles, and I mean miles better than what the G63 has. And really, all in all, as an overall package, you can't get much better than the Range Rover Vogue 5 liter autobiography. But that said, as brilliant as it may be, this is, after all, a head to head comparison between this and the G63. And while this is a brilliant car, there's no doubt in my mind of that. There's, there's something about that G63. As brilliant as this car is, and I'll admit it's better in almost every single measurable way than the G63. For some reason, that car has my heart. The Range Rover Vogue might be better in every measurable way. It's faster, it's more comfortable, it's more spacious, it's more luxurious. And if I'm not mistaken, it's also cheaper. But that's the thing, why would that matter when you have a 5.5 liter bi-turbo V8 under your right foot? A car that looks as good as it does, a car that sounds as good as it does, and ultimately a car that... You know, I can't explain what I like about the G63 because if I look at it realistically, nothing about this car is appealing to me, other than that engine. But for some reason, I can't, again, I cannot put this into words, but the G-Wagon just, it, it comes together to be such a special experience, especially for Karachi. It's imposing, it's loud, it looks great, it's just, I don't know what it is about this car, man. It has an appeal. You know, it's like, I know the Range Rover is a better buy, practically speaking. But then again, look at me. I mean, I should be eating salads, but instead of that, I'm gonna go for the burger and fries because although it's not good for my heart, it makes my heart happy. And it's a very similar thing with this car and the Range Rover because yes, the Range Rover is a better car, but it's not a better tool for making you feel special. And that's where the G-Wagon shines shines brighter than anything else I have pretty much ever driven and sometimes you have to forget the practicality aspect and you just have to focus on what matters to you and what matters to your heart what what's special and this car is exactly that it's special look I'll be the first to admit that if this head-to-head -head was conducted based solely of facts and figures the G63 would have been walked by the Range Rover because it really is better in every single way. But the G-Wagon does something that the Range Rover will never be able to do. It makes you feel like a million bucks. And for that reason, and that reason alone, my winner for this head-to-head -head is the G63 AMG. Thank you so much for watching, guys. Cars are out.